Whew. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a tough video. As a person, I want to be positive. I want to be motivating. And I do not, above all else, want to discourage people from following their dreams and discouraging people to uh, pursue what they want to pursue. But this video, we need to be real for a sec. This is something that many people want to know. And instead of answering it so many times on my Instagram, I would rather just make a video and to talk about it, essentially. And this is not an insult to any people in the oil and gas industry. This is not meant to discourage people, but this is some things that you should be aware about. When I was a beginning petroleum engineering student, this is something that never occurred to me until several years down the line. And my hope is that if you watch this video, many people can look at this and evaluate for themselves whether or not they want to become a petroleum engineering student or a petroleum engineer in general. So that is today's video. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is the first time we are meeting, my name is Francis Ramos. I am a petroleum engineering student, recent uh, Texas Tech graduate, and today we are going to talk about why it is hard to get a job in oil and gas. First things first, uh, let's be real here. Let's talk about the price of oil. A big good reason why many people, especially that were my classmates, they're, they're having a tough time finding a job. And the main reason why they're having a tough time finding a job is because of the oil prices. If you don't know what the oil prices are, look them up because they probably changed by the time I uh, uploaded this video. But essentially, they are a metric economists use for not only the economy, but also a metric for us as petroleum engineering students to see how much we're, how much money we can be making. And if you are a aspiring petroleum engineer looking for a job, this is going to determine if companies are hiring or not. And when oil prices are low, that's really bad for oil and gas students, especially those who are straight out of college. So for oil prices, it has been theorized that oil and gas prices go up and down about every six years or so. That is, I'm not saying that that is a standard, but that so far from my experience since 2014 to uh, 2020, usually every six years or so, the oil market goes down. And that's why it's hard to find a job because when the oil prices are down, many oil and gas companies are saving money and they are not hiring anybody. And that's just a cold hard fact. So oil prices are definitely something that you should be aware of and job security is a very interesting, very weird concept in oil and gas because on the surface, because of how much money they're making, you would think that the job security is secure. And this may be true for the senior level position, senior designer, senior um, driller. These are and management positions. These are things that, yes, you can be secure. But to get that point, you're gonna have to work so many years for it and add so much value to the company that you're working for. Prices of oil, job security, definitely something you should be looking out for. The second thing and the last thing that I wanna talk about because honestly, it is a very tough topic to tackle, but it is networking. And networking means your contacts. How many people do you know? How many people are you working with? How, how, do people like working with you? It is all of these things. And networking may be a reason why you won't get a job. When I first started as a petroleum engineering student, I 
had no contacts. I knew nobody in the oil and gas industry. I knew none of my classmates going into the oil and gas industry. My friends, classmates, family, relatives, none of them have anything to do with the oil and gas industry. And I meet so many people who do. And the discouraging thing is, is that they, whoever they are, are most likely to get a job faster than you. There is a lot of nepotism in the oil and gas industry. That is a fact. Anyone in this industry will tell you that. And it's hard to get a job because if they don't know you, they are less likely to hire you. And there are so many times when I am looking for, an, I was looking for an internship where I just couldn't get it because there was, it took me so long to get my first internship. It took me three years to get my first internship. And that's why, that's because other people who already have that established network and were born into it are more likely to get the job than you. And that's something that we all have to deal with in our own way. That is why, over time, in those three years when I was looking for my first internship, I would try to make friends with my classmates, I would spend a lot of time working with them, I met all of these recruiters at job fairs and I asked them questions about the industry, and over time, I grew my network. And it's something that you can't do overnight. And it's something that you won't be able to do because not everybody is hiring at the moment. And growing your network is something that everybody needs to do, regardless whether they like it or they not. After growing your network, things become a little bit better. And that is networking. And if you don't have a network, you're gonna need to work harder. You need to work harder than anybody else in your class. If you really wanna succeed in petroleum engineering, you're gonna to have to deal with these in one way or another. Oh, so that's it for this video. Uh, <laughs> didn't want to go super deep there, but this is a big frustration that many of my classmates and I experience in our time growing as petroleum engineering students and engineers in general. I hope you enjoyed this and um, good luck out there. And as always, if you want to watch more of my content, uh, please hit the subscribe button down below because I on occasion upload any oil and gas content. I'm also uh, doing a bunch of other things on this channel. So come on down. It's going to be a fun time. And as always, if you want to ask me a question personally, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'll put a link down in the description down below and one here. And as always, I will see you in the next video. So bye guys.